So we first choose the substitution from the table, or maybe you already remembered this shape of this, uh, the form, the form of this integral is nine squared minus x squared, right? That gives us the idea what to use as substitution. Thus, x will be what? No, it's, it's like we have only three substitutions. Secant sine or tangent? Sine. Because it's constant square minus input squared. So that will be sine x. And then it says, don't forget to multiply by a. And a comes from the other variable, the other constant. So it is a squared minus x squared. And a is 9. So this is kind of the most important. If you know what substitution to use, everything follows from here. dx is 9 cosine x. Okay, it's not x. Sine theta. Theta. This is like English th. Theta. D theta. Put it in the box as well. That's the most important. Now we can start plugging into the integral. However, this is substitution. When you use substitution, even though we don't call it use substitution, it doesn't matter. We need to change limits of integration. So let's do that. When x is 0, then what is theta? So the thing is, let's, the integral will be, let me write down the integral without limits of integration, and I will tell you what is the problem. 81 minus x squared, which is 81 sine squared. 81 sine squared theta. dx is, let me put it in different color, dx is 9 cosine theta d theta. That is because it's derivative of x. Since everything is in terms of theta, I cannot write down 0 and 9 over 2 here. It has to be connected. So what is theta then? The thing is, it's not that simple. Let me finish and I'll check the questions. It's not that simple. You cannot just find theta out of x equals 0. You actually have to solve equations. So when we have equation, which we call star, x equals 9 sine theta, we used to plug in x to find u substitution but this one is not that simple we will have to solve equation x equals 9 sine theta from here we know that sine theta is 0 but when theta is 0 or no when sine is 0 at 0 and pi and 2 pi and so on and so on it actually has infinitely many zeros but since inverse functions are restricted, we taught you these guys in calculus one class, inverse functions, they're restricted. They have restricted domain. We're going to only choose this one. Theta is zero. Okay, so zero end up to be zero. That is fine. How about the other one? The other one is, what is it? Nine over two. X equals nine over two. Then, let me jump right away. 9 over 2 is 9 sine theta. I'm just plugging it into the left-hand side. 9 over 2 gives you 9 sine theta. That means sine theta equals 1 half, right? I'm just canceling out 9. 9 and 9 going to cancel out. When sine theta is 1 half, when theta is pi over 6. So that gives you reviewing of the angles, trigonometric angles. Pi over 6. That's called inverse functions. We're actually looking for angle from the given distance. The distance we got is 1 half. Which angle gave me that? Pi over 6. So the upper limit is pi over 6. And the fun part starts now. Now we just hope that everything collapses into very simple thing, and it will. That's the beauty of those identities. So integral from 0 to pi over 6. 
a square root of factor out 81. That is not the coincidence it can be factored out. That's why we chose it. 81 is factored out gives you 1 minus sine squared. Yay! Every time you see 1 minus sine squared or 1 minus cosine squared, you should be happy. 9 cosine theta d theta equals square root of 81 is 9. There's one more 9 waiting inside. So this blue 9 also goes out of the integral from 0 to pi over 6. And then what is this piece? That is cosine squared. But cosine squared, should I write down, I guess, let me write down slowly not to skip too many steps. Cosine squared inside of the square root times cosine theta d theta. 9 times 9 is 81. Definite integral from 0 to pi over 6. Cosine squared square root gives you cosine. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. So you end up to have cosine theta times cosine, oh, well, just the half cosine squared, d theta. So it did shrink into something convenient, into cosine squared. Now the question is how to integrate cosine squared. We'll learn it on Monday. That's what I plan to put on the quiz on Friday. Cosine squared or sine squared. At least you need to know this. This is the very basic of this chapter. How to do this integral, who remembers? It's a new material, but we did it on Monday. Something should be used, who remembers? Double angle formula. So remember, we did not like squared when we're integrating trigonometric functions. To get rid of the squared, we either break it into pieces, but this is a simple case. So we use double angle formula. Cosine and sine squared gives you one half. Parenthesis, 1 plus or minus cosine double angle. Cosine likes itself, so plus. Don't forget to double your theta. That's the whole point. You're sacrificing the power, but instead you're getting double angle. So, it will be 1 half. 1 plus cosine 2 theta. Parenthesis d theta and now we're integrating it as two small integrals it gives you 81 over 2 integral of 1 is what theta so it's not x remember we're talking about d theta here so integral of 1 is theta exactly theta plus or minus, what is integral of cosine? Sine, so it will be plus. Well, I guess, let's factor out this 81 over two, because why not? And now it will be theta plus, integral of cosine is sine, two theta, and then what? Dividing by the leading coefficient. That is the shortcut of u sub, that's why U sub shortcuts are so good. But actually, you can perform the whole U substitution if you want. U is 2 theta. DU will be 2 d theta. D theta is U over 2. And that's how 1 half pops up. And now it will be plus C or what? No. A bar from 0 to pi over 6. And this is why it's easier than the previous integral. We end up with the answer in terms of theta, and we're not going back to x notation using right triangle, because nobody cares how you got the final answer when it is a constant. We're going to plug pi over 6 and 0, and it gives us a number. Nobody cares how you got it using u substitution, theta, t, m. Just plug it in and get the answer. So let's do it. Almost done. And then I will ask, get all this Hold 10 minutes for questions if you want. 81 over 2. Plugging pi over 6. Pi over 6 plus sine 2 times pi over 6. Double angle worked over 2. Minus what minus what? 0 and 0. 
because sin theta zero is zero and sine of zero is also zero. So that's nice. And now you just need to remember what is sine of pi over three? Square root of two or not? Close. Yes. So that's the thing. Uh, many people don't remember the table, so you need to review it from time to time. Especially if you end up to be in engineering major, you will have lots of trigonometry there. I ask people who already have jobs in architecture and blah, blah, blah. On daily basis, they do triple integrals, which we learn in calculus three, and lots of trigonometric functions and differential equations, which is different class. Pi over six plus one half, that's just standing there. And then there's a square root of three over two. Finally, we can simplify it to be 81 over two. And then it will be pi over six plus square root of three over four. That is the final answer, which is some kind of number. And we never went back to the right triangle, which is very pleasant that we did not have to do that because we already changed limits of integration to z zero and pi over six so we don't have to go back to the original variable that might answer the question some of you wanted to ask why not to keep the previous limits of integration because many of you like doing that this looks like a hustle to perform this change if you keep zero and nine over two then you will have to go back to the original variable over here you cannot keep it as theta, and that will require right triangle. So choose what is simpler to use right triangle after this step, because you cannot plug 0 and 9 over 2 here, or change limits of integration at the first place. This is a good example when changing actually is easier than going back to the original variable. So if that was your question, I just answered it, hopefully, that you have to change limits of integration, but then you do not go back to x do not go back to x because it's a definite integral and you successfully changed limits of integration so you can just plug pi over six and zero which is an angle did you notice it was not nine over three which is length and stuff it was actually zero and pi over six it's an angle so it also matches the units i told you units matter if we're working with theta as an angle you better plug in angles in the radians or degrees if you're working with distances, which we had at the first place, that was x, x some kind of units, then it's 0, 9 over 2.